Hi students and friends, this is your host and teacher Sayyid Ayazuddin Haider and you are watching Learn and Teach by Sarayaz. So I was doing past papers and this time I have selected for 5070 variant 22 and the session is May June 2023. I'm not going to discuss the time, marks, and other formalities for this paper as you all are aware of, aware of it. So straight away, let's start the paper. So here's the question number one. Choose from the following oxides to answer the questions. These are the oxides. Each oxide may be used once, more than once, or not at all. State which oxide is neutral. You see, in these oxides, we have only one neutral oxide. Oh, we can have another neutral oxide also. We have two neutral oxides for this question. You can either write H2O or CO. Both of these oxides are neutral. B, reacts with calcium oxide to form slag in the blast furnace. Now, in the blast furnace, silicon dioxide, SiO2, reacts with calcium oxide to form slag. This is the reaction. CaO plus SiO2 and we will get CaSiO3. This is calcium silicate, also known as slag. So, you will write SiO2. Number C reacts with warm dilute hydrochloric acid to give a blue colored solution. Now, copper 2 plus ion gives blue colored solution. Now, let's see if you have any compound of copper here. We have the oxide of copper here. That is copper 2 oxide. This is copper 2 oxide. So, this oxide will react with warm dilute hydrochloric acid to give a blue colored solution. So you write CuO. D is amphoteric. Among these oxides, we have only one amphoteric oxide and that is ZnO. This is zinc oxide and it is amphoteric. E contains an ion with an oxidation number of plus 3. So if you look at the oxides here, here we are having carbon monoxide, CO, carbon dioxide, CO2, calcium oxide, CO, copper 2 oxide, CuO, iron 3 oxide, Fe2O3. Then we have water, Sulfur dioxide, SO2, silicon, 4 oxide, SiO2, zinc oxide, ZnO. So, Fe2O3 is iron, 3 oxide. And the name implies that the iron ion here must be carrying plus 3 charge. As you know that oxygen carries minus 2 charge. So, Fe2O3 will be the answer for this question. Fe2O3. Number F decolorizes acidified aqueous potassium magnate 7. If you see these oxides, there is only one oxide that decolorizes acidified potassium magnate, which is SO2. Because during this reaction, SO2 will get oxidized further into SO3 when you react it with acidified aqueous potassium magnet 7. So you write SO2. Question number 2. Group 7 includes the elements chlorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. A. Chlorine is a green gas at room temperature and pressure. State the appearance of iodine at room temperature and pressure. You know that iodine is solid at room temperature pressure and its color is 
gray black or purple gray black or purple solid B. Chlorine reacts with aqueous potassium iodide in a displacement reaction. Here's the reaction. Cl2 aqueous plus 2I minus aqueous gives 2Cl minus aqueous plus I2 aqueous. Number one, explain in terms of electrons why chlorine is an oxidizing agent in this reaction. Now, what is oxidizing agent? Oxidizing agent is the one which oxidizes the other reactant in this reaction. And reduces itself now they are saying explain in terms of electrons why electron uh, chlorine is an oxidizing agent in this reaction so if you look at this change carefully cl2 to cl minus it means chlorine must gain one electron because the oxidation state or number on cl2 is zero so oxidation number or state is decreased from zero to minus one due to gain of electron so you write Cl2 gain electrons. B. State the oxidation number of iodine in I2. Now you don't see any kind of charge on I2. So it must be carrying zero charge. The answer will be zero. Number three. Describe what is observed during the displacement reaction. The reaction is an example of displacement reaction. As they have already mentioned. So what you will observe. There is a change in color. The change in color is due to the formation of iodine in the solution. And the solution turns to brown. C. The rate of diffusion of fluorine gas is greater than that of fluorine gas. Under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. Number one. What, state what is meant by the term diffusion. It's simply net movement of particles from higher concentration to lower concentration. Net movement of particles from higher concentration to lower concentration number two explain why the rate of diffusion of fluorine is greater than that of chlorine under the same conditions simply refer mr of chlorine or chlorine in this case fluorine if you will compare the MR of fluorine and chlorine, look at the position of fluorine. Here is group 7. We have fluorine and chlorine. If you look at their mass number, fluorine is 19, fluorine is 35.5. And you know that they all exist in the diatomic state. So you write F2 and Cl2. MR for F2 will be 2 multiplied by 19 gives 38. 38 is the MR of F2. What about chlorine? It's 2 multiplied by 35.5. You will get 71. You can clearly, clearly see that the chlorine has lower MR than chlorine. So you write fluorine has lower MR or relative molecular mass than chlorine. Number three, the rate of diffusion of fluorine increases as the temperature increases. Suggest why using ideas about kinetic particle theory, particles have more kinetic energy. Or you can even write particles move faster.
नंबर थ्री दिस क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट द प्रिपेशन ऑफ सॉल्ट ए जिंक नाइट्रेट इज अलेबल सॉल्ट इट इज प्रिपेयर बाय द रिएक्शन ऑफ एन इनसोलेबल कार्बोनेट विद अ डायल्यूट एसिड द इक्वेशन फॉर दिस रिएक्शन इज शोन दिस इज अ रिएक्शन जेड एन सी ओ थ्री सॉलिड प्लस टू एच एन ओ थ्री एक्वस गिवस जेड एन एन ओ थ्री होल टू आइस एक्वस प्लस एच टू ओ लिक्विड प्लस सीओ टू गैस A sample of 4.5 gram of zinc carbonate is added to 50 cm cube of 1.3 mole per dm cube nitric acid. Number one, show by calculation that the zinc carbonate is in excess. The best way of doing this kind of question is calculate the moles or convert the mass of mass or the uh, volume and concentration given in the question into moles. This will be the best route. so for zn and co3 first of all i need mr of zn and co3 so that i can convert this into moles so we have mr of z and co3 here we have one atom of z so one multiply by where is z and zn is here ar mass number is 65 carbon we have one carbon atom its mass number is 12 what about oxygen oxygen is group 6 mass is 16 so 1 multiply by 65 plus 1 multiply by 12 plus we have three atoms of oxygen so 3 multiply by 16 what you will get you will get 65 plus 12 plus 48 So the MR for Z and CO three will be sixty five plus twelve plus forty eight one twenty five. Now, in order to calculate the moles of zinc carbonate, moles of Z and CO three. We need to divide the mass by the MR four point five zero. Divided by one twenty five. Four point five divided by one twenty five. Point zero three six moles. Point zero three six moles of zinc carbonate or Zn and CO three. What about H N O three? That is nitric acid. We have fifty centimeter cube of one point three mole per dm cube nitric acid. So you must have same units for the volume. So I am converting this dm cube into uh, centimeter cube. We know that one dm cube is equal to one thousand centimeter cube. So I will write one centi one uh, thousand centimeter cube contains one point Three zero moles of HNO three. Therefore, fifty centimeter cube contains X moles. So we will get X thousand. X is equal to fifty multiplied by one point three zero. Or X is equal to fifty multiplied by one point three zero divided by one thousand. Fifty multiplied by one point three divided by one thousand. Point zero six five. Point zero six five moles of HNO three. These are the moles. Of HNO three, these are the moles for Zn CO three. Now, according to the reaction equation, according to the reaction one mole of Zn CO three reacts with two moles of HNO three, 
So therefore, point zero three six moles reacts with x moles of HNO three. Do the cross, we will get x is equal to two multiplied by point zero three six. This will give us the moles reacting moles of HNO three. 2 multiply by 0 0.036 and we will get 0 0.072 moles of HNO3. Now compare this, compare these moles with the moles obtained. These moles are higher, which means we need higher number of moles of HNO3. The requirement for the most of HNO3 is higher than the one given. So it must be limiting. Hence it is proved Z and zinc carbonate must be in excess. Hence zinc carbonate is in excess. Which also means that the most for Z and CO3 is higher than the one which is needed for reacting with 0 0.06 moles of HNO3. Number two, once the reaction has finished, the mixture is filtered. State why the mixture is filtered. Definitely to remove excess or unreacted Z and CO3. Excess or unreacted zinc carbonate number three describe how to make pure dry zinc nitrate crystals from an aqueous solution of zinc nitrate very easy you have three marks for this question so write down the steps involved here so what steps we are having we have to evaporate the solution Evaporate or heat gently. Next part will be crystallized. Or cool down. Last step will be dry in air or oven. Dry in air or oven. Number B, lead carbonate is an insoluble salt. It is prepared using a precipitation reaction. Name two aqueous solutions that react together to give a precipitate of lead chloride. Now you have to start with the soluble salt of lead. We have only one soluble salt for lead because we know that all chlorides are soluble. Except lead, mercury, silver, all sulfates soluble except basin ke laddu. We have barium, calcium, and lead. So you can't take sulfate. What about carbonate? All carbonates are insoluble. Except sodium, potassium, and ammonium. Now we have left only with the nitrate. So we can take lead nitrate. All nitrates are soluble. So we'll take lead nitrate. One of the salt must be nitrate. Or then you have to react with this. Uh, any chloride of soluble chloride like Sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, etc. You can take even calcium chloride. C. Ammonium sulfate is a soluble salt. It is prepared by the reaction of an alkali and an acid. Name the alkali and the acid used. 
so for the alkali you must be taking the uh, one which contains ammonium ion so it must be either aqueous ammonia or ammonium hydroxide for acid it must be containing sulfate ion so it's sulfuric acid question number 4 This question is about compounds that contain magnesium and nitrogen. A the formula for a nitrate ion can be written as N3 minus. This is the proton number and this is the nucleon number for nitrogen. Complete table 4.1 to show the number of particles in this nitrate ion. So the electrons so it it is carrying 3 minus which means that it must have three extra electrons in this. So if you look at the proton number of this nitride ion which is coming from nitrogen the proton number is 7 and it's as it is carrying minus 3 charge which means that it must have three extra electrons so 7 plus 3 you will get 10 so 10 will be the number of electrons for this nitride ion neutron in order to calculate the uh, neutron subtract the proton number from nucleon number 15 minus 7 you will get 8 what about proton 7 was be the proton b state why the formula for a magnesium ion is mg2 plus rather than mg plus or mg3 plus mg2 plus now look at the position of mg it's in group 2 mg proton number of mg is 12 which means means it must have 12 electrons coming back to the question mg and mg plus 2 now what is the difference between mg and mg plus 2 is that in mg plus 2 it has lost two electrons the proton number of mg or magnesium is 12 which means it has 12 electrons if you write the electronic configuration it must be like this 2 comma 8 comma 2 so these are the two electrons in the valence shell now there are two option for magnesium it can either take up six more electrons to complete this valence shell or it can lose these two electrons to acquire the electronic configuration of inert gas one of the inert gases so in that way it can uh, attain stability so in mg2 plus it is having 2 comma 8 so this must be the must be the right configuration for this one and in this case it is having complete valence shell now what happens if mg loses one electron only so it will carry mg plus and the configuration become 2 comma 8 comma 1 which must be incorrect because in this way the valence shell is not complete now next scenario mg plus 3 it means it has lost three electrons now configuration become 2 comma 7 this is also incorrect the reason is that again is valence shell become incomplete so this is the most feasible state for mg2 plus it has complete outer shell of electrons the formula for a nitride ion is n3 minus did use a formula for magnesium nitride now in this they are asking the formula for magnesium nitride magnesium here is magnesium mg nitride it's n the charge for nitride is given it's 3 minus what about magnesium look at the position of magnesium it's here group 2 which means it must be carrying plus 2 charge so i will write plus 2 here ignore the charges 2 3 
now these subscripts will be exchanged so we have three here two here the final formula must be mg three and two this is for the magnesium nitrite d magnesium nitrate mgno3 hold twice is an ionic compound predict two physical properties of magnesium nitrate or they are asking uh, any two physical properties of magnesium nitrate any two from so it must be in the solid state so write solid state or high melting point or you can even write soluble in water soluble or dissolves in water you can write conduct electricity in aqueous solution or molten state conducts electricity in aqueous solution e Calculate the percentage by mass of nitrogen in magnesium nitrate. Give your answer to two significant figures. So first of all, you need to know the formula for magnesium nitrate. It is MgNO3 whole twice. Now we need to know the mass numbers of these atoms in order to calculate the MR. MR of Mg. NO3 hold twice. So we have one magnesium, we have two nitrogen and two multiplied by three, six oxygen. So here's magnesium. The mass number for magnesium is 24. Nitrogen, it is 14. Oxygen, it's 16. So uh, one multiplied by 24 plus we have two atoms of nitrogen, two multiplied by 14. Plus, we have 2 multiplied by 3, 6, 6 atoms of oxygen, 6 multiplied by 16. So, we have 24 plus 28 plus 96. Yes. So, adding up these, we'll get the final MR of MgNO3 whole twice, 24 plus 28 plus 96. 148 148 will be the mr so i want to calculate the percentage by mass of nitrogen how many nitrogen two nitrogen atoms so we have to multiply 28 by 100 and divided by 148 in order to get the percentage by mass of nitrogen so 28 multiply by 100 divided by 148 18 point 918%. This will be your final answer. Question number five. Carbon reacts with steam to make carbon monoxide and hydrogen. The reaction is reversible. The forward reaction absorbs thermal energy, which means it is endothermic. For your convenience, I am writing delta H is equal to plus sign. If forward is exothermic, backward must be endothermic. Delta H is minus. A. An equilibrium mixture is formed when the reversible reaction happens in a closed system. Number one, explain why the reversible reaction must be in a closed system for an equilibrium mixture to be formed. So that reactants and products cannot escape. So that reactants and products cannot escape. If one of these will escape, you can't get the reversible uh, reaction reaching to dynamic equilibrium state. Uh, number two, predict what happens to the position of equilibrium. When the temperature is decreased and the pressure remains constant, explain your answer. So, they are talking about the position of equilibrium when the temperature is decreased. 
so when you are decreasing the temperature it must be favor uh, the direction in which there is exothermic reaction so the equilibrium will shift towards the left hand or reactant side shifts to reactant or left hand side explanation forward is endothermic or backward is exothermic you can even write in order to minimize temperature decrease to minimize temperature decrease next number 3 predict what happens to the position of equilibrium when the pressure is decreased and the temperature remains constant now for pressure you have to look at the number of moles of the gases so we have one mole of gas on the reactant side and 1 plus 1 two moles on the product side for your convenience i am writing it here one mole reactant side and two moles on the product side so if you decrease the pressure it will move to the side where there will be higher moles of gases so it will definitely shift the equilibrium to the right hand side equilibrium sh will shift to right hand side shifts to right and side or product side just write the number of moles uh, we have higher number of moles on the product side higher number of moles of gases mention gases you can also refer to the volume of gases on product side or less number of moles of gases on reactant side b predict what happens to the rate of the backward reaction when the temperature is decreased and the pressure remains constant definitely rate will decrease why the rate decreases because the particles have less kinetic energy or less number of uh, particles having energy equal or more than activation energy particles have less energy there will be fewer collisions involving particles with equal or more than the activation energy c predict what happens to the rate of the backward reaction when the pressure is increased and the temperature remains constant the rate increases the reason is that you have more particles per unit volume
which means you have greater collision frequency. Thanks for watching. Press like and share my videos. For more videos, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon.